What is going on, guys? Check this here out. I've been having AC problems with this truck for the past uh, about, 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 I say, year, year and a half. It had a little hole in it, and I, you know, go put a little bit of something here and here and there, here and there. Then one day it just got bad to it. I was spending, I was spending about twenty some dollars a week oh. on refrigerant, and found out. I said, let me look real good. I looked, the condenser had a hole in it. And that's a common thing on the 2014 Chevy Silverado. Well, hey, they come and get a hole in it. So I changed the condenser. I don't think I put it on video. I don't think I did. But I was rolling. It wasn't all that cold, though, but it was cool. It was cold, but it wasn't like cold like I think it should be. Then one day, I come, see, before I come out of the store or anywhere, you know, I crank my truck up, let it run with the air conditioning on for about, gee, it's good five minutes or so. I don't like getting in a hot vehicle if you ain't got to. If you got that luxury, do it. But I come out of the store one day, man, it was burning up in there. I'm like, oh, man, what's going on? I get down the highway, I fill it with the little knobs, fill it with them, and none of that work. Get home and look. Looked like my compressor had a little problem right up in, right up in here. See how that independently spins? This is a fan clutch. I think it burned out, but what I think happened, I'm quite quite sure this happened because uh, what that happened was this easy. What that happened was, oh, uh, I had. Did a little bit of, put my little scan tool on and checked out a couple of things. Come to find out, I think my, well, I know my, because I done changed it already. The coolant temperature sensor, it went bad. And the coolant temperature sensor, it will give you, like, bad gas mileage because it's telling you your car is running a certain temperature that it ain't, and it's got to dump more gas. All kinds of junk it'll do that you wouldn't think it'll do. So it wouldn't allow my fan to come on. The fans didn't come on, and then when this compressor kicked in with the air condition, if you don't cool that down, it'll blow it up. So I think it psh, just blew out the front when that temperature sensor went bad. That blew that out. Well, it, it, kept, it kept the fan from coming on, then it blew this out. So I went on ahead and sprung for this. There's a couple and a half, a few hundred dollars or what have you. I could have got one for like $89, $90 from the junkyard, but I don't know the lifespan on it, or I don't know, you know, I, if it was something simple up top, I would have did it, because putting this down in the way deep down off up in that crevice and digging in there, and then it don't work, got to go back through that again, nah, it ain't worth my time, or I put it on there and it worked, then a month or so from now, when the warranty go away, I done spent $98 plus what I'm gonna spend on a new one. So I done like, you know, over, over did. So what I'm gonna do here, we got this AC compressor right here. Got some brand new O-rings. And I got a special little, I had to go get some special little tools. I done lost one. I got another socket somewhere. I got a half inch socket. And I got this little five millimeter socket that goes on these little joints like this. Because it's a screw that go all the way through here that I normally need to take that whole socket out. They don't tell you to do it. I think it go here. Yeah, it go here. But it's easy to hang it back up. Then you got to have this impact. And that impact go with this expansion valve. What do expansion valve do? Shit, I don't know. All I know is expansion valve. But... <coughs> I might have got them for nothing because he's got some rings inside. And this wrench here also gonna go for a little screw that goes in the middle of this expansion valve. And this, like I said, the impact will hold it on. And I got, I'm gonna need uh, 21.16 ounces of refrigerant. So 12 plus some of this can, I'm gonna put it on my scale as I go. And I got manifolds and everything. So on my uh, 
I need, like I said, I need 21.16 ounces of Freon. That's so that's like two. That's a cannon. So then I'm gonna let my little, you know, my low side of my my, my gauge be on somewhere around 42 or so, 35, 42, and the high side 195, 200. Some some in that little nature, depending on the temperature outside and you know all them ambience, everything it, it, it goes with heating in there. Then you got this thing here, which made me sick. Stretch fit. This goes just for this air conditioning cooler. My truck got a serpentine belt on it, but the air condition takes one of these joints. And there's no pull it, there's no tension on it. So you can't just like take it, put it on, and adjust it back to the, the fit. You gotta cut the old belt off and put a new one on. So I guess they saying, hey, you need to change that belt while you're there. But the but the kicker about it is you gotta have a special tool. And the special tool hadn't made it to my mailbox yet. It should be in there today because this compressor came today. Ordered it uh I don't know, last Saturday, Sunday, I don't know, one of them. It came today. The suspension valve. I picked it up from the store. Let me see. I think I ordered it Sunday. That they didn't have it in stock that I went back Monday. They did something stupid, so they still didn't have it. I didn't get mad because I wasn't getting ready to hook it up. So I got it, I think, Tuesday. And the belt I got Monday. Refrigerant, I already had abundance of. I got that, like, to uh, Monday, too. I got this the other day. So I'm going to show you that special tool when I go check the mail. That special tool on the uh, actual crankshaft pulley, it connects to it and it comes across here to keep you from eating your teeth up. Cause people could like try to pry at this. And y'all have seen people pry at this and they put nicks in it. And them and they ride this V-belt. And them nicks keep scratching at that V-belt and eventually break it. Now you gotta take all that junk off to do that again. But I went and on here and bought the special tool to put on there and you, you put it on and you put the belt on top of it. Then you take your crankshaft and you just crank it. You crank it until the belt ride onto the top of it. Now, it look like I know what I'm talking about, don't it? But I don't know nothing. Oh yeah, I got some peg oil to go here because you can't run them dry. But this dude here came pre-filled with the correct amount of peg oil. So I ain't got to deal with that. I might buy some UV dye put in there so when it leak, I can find it. Let me get. Let me see if this tool out there. All right, here we go. All right, this box gotta go. I might get away without taking this box out. That right there. Come up, come up, right there. That's the expansion valve. The compressor. I can see it, but you can't see it. Can't. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Right there, right there, right there. Right there. But me, I don't have to jack my truck up. Right. So, let's say I might got to get. Uh, I'm gonna have to take this skid plate off right here. This rough country skid plate. And as you can see, the compressor to the left with that belt that I gotta cut. There it is. Yep, I'm gonna have to take this skid plate off. I don't feel like doing that either. Okay. And like I was telling uh, Trey 57 Productions, get with it, get a little behind. You see the little rust I got here? It's nothing like y'all have up north that they can wipe off with a rag. <laughs> All right, we got the whole plenum piece off right there. Now you can see. Now I'm gonna have to take this. Uh, either me a breaker bar or they have a tool for this, but you don't need that tool. A breaker bar or a long. Uh, Matter of fact, I'm going to show you. This serpentine belt. 
you put this bar right here. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. You ain't gotta have this special tube. Compressor. And it done spewed some kind of junk everywhere down there. Let me get this tube show. Well, let me get I'm gonna see if I can use this big cobalt wrench right here. If not, I get my uh uh torque wrench. It's a little bit longer and bigger. But I think this will be suffice. Am I going the right way? Yes, I is. See, I can't hold this camera. Let me see if I can mount this dude up some kind of way. Let's see. Let's see. All right, stick them up in there. Target wouldn't want to be them, be them, be them. Stick them up. Okay, that'll work right there. It would have worked if I'd have left it long. All right, let's see what happens. You take this tension and pull it, and you remove your belt. Remember how that went now? You don't remember how that went? You in trouble. All right. One long serpentine belt. I forgot to go get a new one. I'm going to go ahead and replace it while I'm here. The truck just hit 100,000 miles the other day, y'all. Now this go down when they hit a hundred thousand. Ain't that something? Come on out of there, Bill. Before I get mad and turn green. Hey. Let's see. It ain't got no cracks in it. It's beautiful. It might be a I'm gonna, I'm gonna inspect it a little bit better. Cause it look like it's it's good. By inspecting it up because you don't want to have to, you know, I don't know. We'll see. All right, let me tell y'all a trick of the trade right here. You're not gonna find how to do this too much on land. So, the trickiest booger about this uh, is, a, is the AC line, the high and low that's going to the top of the compressor. You can't get to it unless you did some special cutting of, of uh, sockets or something. So, I mean, because you put your socket on it, it's going to hit the side wall. So what you need to do is, you need a top bolt in. Where is it? Where is it? Can you see it? The top bolt, just the damn top bolt. Leave your top bolt in. And you take this dude, and you grab it by one of these lines. Be careful not to break the line. You swivel it up to you, and you'll be able to, your socket going to come up. It's like, Missionary, you know, let me back. I, 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 I watch your back. And it, it come up to you. you. Stick your socket on there. That's the only way you can get to that thing. So that's the trick of the trade right there. Cause this thing here is 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 whooping me just for that little old screw. That that old booger right there. Mail man hadn't came yet. They getting on my nerve. Ain't gonna be put my belt on. My mail man. I don't know how many vacation days he got, but he always off. And then he has some mailman taking his place. Don't know what they doing. It is currently about six something. My mail used to be here three thirty four, but I forgot to tell you one more thing. I got these earplugs. What I'm gonna do with these earplugs is I'm gonna stick them in the uh, in the lines, cause. I'm going to vacuum this out. Matter of fact, let me get this fan on right there so it makes a lot of noise. All right. I'm going to vacuum it out. There's the manifold. But I'm going to vacuum it out anyway, but I want less moisture in there as possible. So I'm going to plug it up with these, and then this will keep all the trash from falling inside your land, which will go in and be catastrophic to your compressor. All right, waiting on the mail, man. While I'm waiting on the mail, man, uh, as you can see, the uh, expansion valve did come with some O-rings. But, the other stuff didn't come with none, so what I'm going to do is, I'm fixing to change these O-rings out. And I told you I had some peg or the 46. I don't even really that one. 46. 
But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the peg oil that's leaking out the other compressor and, and I'm gonna lubricate these rings just like you would do an oil filter. And change them out. Y'all, what's going on in the second? This is another day. I think the devil was out there with me with this thing. Because the wife, she kept asking me stupid, silly, ignorant, crazy questions. And I was already frustrated. And she kept asking me stuff, kept asking, so I gave up. I, I, gave, I said, I'm done with it. I come back tomorrow. So this is the next day. Uh, when I did that condenser, I caught here getting a little old land about this far to go into the condenser on both sides. But come to find out, if you got it not this much off, but just this much off, it's not going in. And I think I'm doing the same thing with this thing, because I, I, I come up with the brainstorm to say, how about I put the AC lines back on before I put the compressor in? It'd be much easier than I just put the compressor, you know, hang it. I got it down there. But since it's not lined up, not going to work. So I've been fighting. I fought with about an hour and a half yesterday. And then come to find out, it's the, the hanger bracket. It's got an end here and an end here that hangs up, and I can't get it to get up there into its slot. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to take it back down, which is not too much none because it ain't really up there. It's just stuck. And I'm going to have to beat this pin out the back to make it wider to accept that bracket. Then it stick the screw in there, shank, put it in. Then when I tighten it up, it'll pull that piece back in, hopefully. So, like I said before, your best out to taking that AC line off is to unscrew it then swivel it up and once you swivel it up you better reach it versus down in the bottom but getting it back on you got to do the same thing you have to put it back on halfway swivel it up to tighten it down then let it let's get out here all right I took it back off this is the piece that I had See how it's sticking out? It didn't want to let it catch. It didn't have enough room, so I popped that out. I'm gonna see how this works now. All right, y'all. Another tip. Another tip. All right, that stud I showed y'all to come out. Uh, I'm gonna get my old hands dirty. No, I'm a pretty boy. Oh, look at that, that boy. All right. Uh, that stud that go right here. Remember I told you it was here? You take that now. Alright. And another thing. When putting this back in, this took me about two hours to figure out. That stood there, same thing. It take a uh, six millimeter. You put that uh, six millimeter right on this tip, pull that stud out too. Pull that stud out. Then you put your uh, lines back on, but like I said, you're gonna have this top bolt, this uh, uh yeah, the top one. You're gonna have this, uh, yeah, the top one in, this top screw in, so you can kind of shimmy this over. But you're gonna take that out, and then you're gonna put your AC lines back in there. All right, once you get your AC lines back in, they flush, then you stick this back in as much as you can by hand. And put a little tight on it then get your your little nut put it back on so it won't back off on you but trying to get that back on without this off yeah all it takes is a little bit off course and it will never go back on so uh look at them white man hands <laughs> on the brown side <laughs> but yeah back to the stuff and uh I told you I had to knock this dude back some in order for it to fit. And when I put my screw in here, when it started getting that tension, I went just a little tighter than what it should be because it should be torquing stuff. But I pulled on it a little bit harder so this can pull it back to where it need to be. And I don't know if it's back to where it need to be, but I think it's back. As long as I think it's back, it feels good. But now I'm also waiting on the mailman still. Well, not the mailman, UPS. UPS is supposed to bring my, uh, belt tool to put this belt back on can't get it on without it gotta have that little tool now that's a, that's a little funny way you can deal with it 
get it on with zip ties and all, but I don't want to bootleg it, especially when I bought the tools that need to be coming. But a lot of people go stick a screwdriver and stuff here, and you, like I said, you were, you were jimmy them things up, and you know, you mess that up, and she asked Mr. Postman. All right. That's for the tap <laughs> Expansion valve. It should be easy. We're going to call it easy. See, we got the compressor back up in there. Got that dude back in there. Let's try to see if this going to All right, take your 13 millimeter, get that boat off right there. Then you're going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That high and low pressure. And see that? Well, no, you can't. That and that. That's going to be this Torx. God, I can't get it. This Torx 25. Torx 25, what you going to need? All right, time to vacuum the system out. What you got to do here? I'm going to have to put this vacuum on. On the high and low port. Open that up. Cut this vacuum on for about 20 minutes. Check make sure it's still got a... Uh, a vacuum on it, which I want it to be around 28, 29, negative down here. And uh, it's got to stay there. If it don't stay there, we got to leak somewhere. That ain't going to be good. Then I have to put something in the system and make it leak to find out, which I know what I did, so I probably can find it. Uh, so, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, as you can see here, I got the uh, expansion valve put in. That's the easiest thing I did to this thing. I put a Schrader valve in right here, the last go around, a new Schrader valve because it was leaking. So, uh, go ahead and get this vacuum started. Oop. Open everything up. Make sure all the valves are open and up. Then we open this, you'll hear the sound of the. You hear it? That's going to suck out all the moisture in this system because when you open up your vacuum, no, well, not your vacuum, when you open up your uh, AC lines, it get moisture in the air up in the system. So you want to pull all that moisture out because moisture bad or anything, so except your skin. So you want to pull all the moisture out and let that go. All right, we, I'm going to do this. The total time gonna be probably about 45 minutes or more because I still gotta wait on UPS to bring my piece to put my belt back on. So after I get this vacuumed out, then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put that belt on, crank up and put some free on in it. Let's see where we go from here. Yo, it is currently early in the morning. The third day. As me waiting on this tool right here. Get the sun some kind of way. As me here waiting on this too. It took me about 30 minutes of battle. Fooling with this. Still ain't got that belt on. Man, that thing's so hard. Are you ready? That's what she said. <laughs> that joke always works. I don't know what they, if you recommend somebody to buy this because this all I know was about this tool and it ain't had no special saying get part numbers so on so on so on so it said for gates belts that's what I got a gate belt and this screw got to come out because it's pulling too big for it to actually work and uh I'm finna try home method here which until zip ties come on now focus in well you know y'all know what a zip tie is I'm gonna wrap this zip tie around the pulley to hold the belt on we'll see where we go from now y'all look at it these folk be round at five in the morning 
Any dog doodle in your yard. He ain't in my yard. He came from the front yard. Look at now, he heading back this way to my tree. Being that you can't go on the internet and find too much to do with this, how to do, whatever, doing the hard part for y'all. Alright, AC pull. Dumb stretch to fit belt. See, that's another stretch to fit belt. It's for a vacuum. Now this belt here is going to be a serpentine belt, which like I showed you again, it's just going to add a little idle pull. You just pull it back. Pull the skin back, put it on, boom. <laughs> no, son. Now this here, we're going to see what happened right here. Alright, put the put your belt on your air conditioner pull it. Make sure this dude on there. Then we're going to come, put this belt halfway on here as much as you can. Wire tie the belt to the pulley. Now that little tool is supposed to sit on the back of here and do the same thing, pull it up, but this gonna hold the belt on, hopefully. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna double tie that. Yeah, I'm gonna double tie that. Then you take your, your wrench and you crank. I don't think you're supposed to do this counterclockwise, but it's belt driven. I'm gonna try it anyway. Too late, did it yesterday. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles, I got that vacuum going again. That's it, no idea here. All right, serpentine belt on. See how it's around the pulley? That took no more than under a minute to put on. You just slide it in place, pull that down, boom, you're done. Yo, let me get him out again. Just embarrass me. Yo. Dish gates. Stretch fit belt tool. That is a straight piece of garbage to me. I use this wire tie. Not this one, but the other one. Which I put on. You saw me. And uh, it took three minutes for me to crank this over with this dude right here. Three minutes. Once the belt got up, well, once this wire tie got up top, it still was holding the belt. I cut it. Now I had a little slippage on the air conditioning pulley, the small pulley. But all I did was once it popped up there, oh, I was home free. So I just uh kind of kept walking it and turned it a little more. It popped all on. So here we go. Three minutes with home hack tools. Now I have to put this serpentine belt on, which is easy. All I do is pull this back with my same wrench, drop that belt on there. And I had this under vacuum overnight. So we down about 28, 29. And that's what I wanted. So that said I has no leak in my AC system. So uh, let me put this belt on, put this turn back on. Well, who remember tornado under the hood? I got it. All right, let me let me get this done. I know I'm out of breakfasts, you know. Yeah, I said breakfasts. So y'all, I can't tell you what I vacuum. I don't know if I had the line on the way when I pressed it. When I pressed this, my vacuum got loud and deep, and most stuff come out. I don't know what I vacuumed last night. Did I vacuum just the line out or what? But it has been chugging and chugging. Now it's back to one under zero. Star wheel weight. Yo, this compressor have whipped me to death. Whipped me. Man, it's, it's night. I gave up, regrouped, did some more, gave up again. So I decided to try to, I don't, I don't put two cans of free on that thing. You see nothing come out of it, nothing. So, uh, I'm like, where is it going? Ain't nothing kicking on, none of that. And, uh, like I said, I had been vacuuming the wrong land. I had been vacuuming the land out because my manifold didn't click all the way on. I'm like, man, I thought I had it good. So I got leaked somewhere, and tonight I said, let me try putting something in there with this little handheld joint without the engine running. I hit it, I have 
still don't see nothing. So I start going everywhere where I worked at. I don't feel nothing. Don't see nothing, nothing that Freon should do. It kind of froze up top, but it didn't do nothing to the bottom. So I'm like, man, it seems like the compressor got a hole in it. I'm going to take it back down tomorrow and uh, see if it do what it do. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, what's going on, guys? 9 a.m. in the morning, I done regrouped. Sunday, uh, fourth day, I think, working on this thing. I'm going to take it back down and find out what it's leaking at. Somewhere down at the bottom down there. I ain't worked on but one line, right? Well, it's two lines, but it's going in the same place like this. So, and that's, the, that's one of the hardest bolts to get to. So, in order to take that out, I got to take the whole thing back down. I got to take the belt off and everything, which I'm going to try not to cut. I'm going to try to uh, do some ingenuity and get it off without cutting it. Because cutting it is going to mean I'm going to pay about $64 on bills. Two bills, short, little small bills to be exact. That ain't what I want to do. So I'm going to try to uh, put something in that wedge and then turn the crank to make the belt jump back off. And, uh, yeah. Y'all, I think we got it whooped. I think we got it whooped. Gonna keep on introducing this can here. Then I'm gonna have to take uh, nine ounces out there, the can right there. That's what you scale for. I think we got them whooped here. Let me go see something right quick. Yeah, we got cold air coming down now. Oh, this was an ass whooping here. I'm gonna tell you my problem. My problem was on that low side line, the O-ring fell off. With all that wiggling I was doing, that one there, but it's a, I had some green ones, the rubber ones. It fell off, and I didn't know it. So I, I didn't, it didn't, it wasn't too much trouble me putting it, oh man, look at that, we got condensation already. It wasn't enough for me to put it back. Uh, it was it was kind of easy to, to take it back down, but I didn't take the whole thing down. Well, <clears throat> update. I got it. AC running blowing good. My problem was the oh. Uh, as I was trying to get that line in yesterday into the compressor, O ring fell off. Aww. And I didn't notice. It. But a tip 2014 Chevy Silverado. They got some little old studs, about this long. Whereas one little stud that's sticking out the compressor. When you take that nut off, when it's with a high low pressure line going, when you take that nut off, Go ahead and take a six millimeter socket and take that little pin out too. And you can actually, if you had a, uh, you don't have to have a deep dish socket. You can get a little, not the little one, but the medium sized one. Put it on a 13 or either get a half inch. And you can, you can put it on, then take your wrench and go in second. Like, put the socket on, take the wrench, and then go. You'd be getting like a couple of clicks at a time, but it'll come off without even touching the compressor bolts or anything. So this is how I, I say this is how you should do it. Do that first what I just said. Move them lines. Then you go down to bottom, cut the belt. Then you got one bolt up top and a nut on the bottom I think. Take that nut off at the bottom. And then you take, I think, a five millimeter small socket and take that. It's a long pin. Take it out. Is it? Yeah, I think it's five or six millimeter. One of them. Take that. Take that out. They say that's something you set your thing on and let it ride. But take it out. Then take your thing out the top and fall down. Well, you gotta get your wires off. 
the wires on with like some old funny clips. They say some some people say press them and come off. Nope. It's got like a white clip like made like a T. You take a screwdriver and push that little clip back. Then you pull the uh, the actual pigtail off. And same thing for the bottom. So but this this job here I done with a let's see. Last job I done this I put a condenser in. Condenser and uh dryer. And something else I did with that. Can't remember what it was, but on this job I did the AC compressor, the expansion valve, new washers everywhere, and I did the uh, high pressure switch, which is called some kind of transducer or something like that. And I did the cooling temperature sensor. It's working. And another thing I found out, my uh, manifold gauge is not reading properly. Even if I calibrate it, it'll, uh, it'll kind of knock off. So I ain't got enough free on in it right now. Damn it, boy. Forget it.